desire for, the things that our flesh can desire and want and need. You know, our flesh has an appetite. It tells us that it wants to do things, that it desires things. I remember a, a young lady who we used to sing with on a group in Washington, D.C., and she would boldly give her testimony about being used to, be, being delivered from homosexuality. And she said to me one day, she said, you know what? She said, my body desired the body of a woman. Desired. Everything in me wanted that. The touch, the feel, the intimacy, the, 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 the uh, uh, relationship. And she said, but when I was delivered, I had to still fight that desire. And I had to speak to my flesh and say, no, you will come under subjection and the submission of the spirit of the God that is within me. You will be subjected to that spirit. Have you died yet? So let's look. Let's see. Let's see. What, what is sin? What is sin? So we're going to look at sin here. Oh, thank you, Father. Sin. Okay. Why sin? One, lack of knowledge. So let's look. Someone read for me that scripture. That's Genesis 4. And can you read it? Is it too small? Can you read it? And Cain told Abel his brother. And it came to be when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and killed him. Hmm. Lack of knowledge of sin. Now go ahead and read. Genesis 4 and 13. And Cain said to Yahweh, my punishment is too great to bear. My punishment is too great to bear. Do you think, and, and Cain just saying that to Yahweh, mm -hmm. do you think maybe he didn't realize he had a lack of knowledge of what this sin would result in. Right. An actual, tangible result of his sin. Then there's deception. Someone read Genesis 3, 13. And Yahweh, Elohim, said to the woman, what is this you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me, and I ate. Deception. So then there can there's sometimes people will sin because they've been deceived into believing that this is fine, George. Don't worry about it. You don't have to keep that Sabbath. That's the Jewish Sabbath. So we're no longer under that. Deception. We've been deceived. Ahava cried out to Yahweh when she realized the depth of what had happened. She cried out and she said, the serpent deceived me. And I ate. Deception. The next, and this is the saddest one, willfulness. Through transgression or through iniquity. Whether we know the perpetrator of the sin has sinned and we didn't say anything, we didn't do anything, or if we were the one who was perpetrated upon, we were the one, the victim of the transgression, the willfulness of the transgression. And this is why Father in his 
ultimate wisdom and and kased, his mercy and his grace he says in the torah if a woman is raped and I always go back to this because you know what thing we have been raped as a people we have been raped pillaged something's been stolen time has been stolen from us that we can never get back We've been raped. So when Father Yahweh says, if a woman is raped within the city gates, and if she does not cry out against that perpetrator, the per perpetrator is killed, stoned, and she is too. Willfully, she didn't open her mouth and cry out. Yahweh doesn't say, well, if she's shy, it doesn't say anything. Yahweh doesn't say, well, if she kind of liked him and it happened, then she didn't say anything. <laughs> Yahweh says that she didn't cry out, period. Why? Because it allows for that same person to perpetuate his sin yes. throughout the camp, throughout the gates of his city. And Yahweh never meant for a man to go around sowing his royal oats. He never meant for that to happen. He meant for a man to marry a woman, live with her, and have children by that woman. He didn't mean for him to go out and have fun all over the city with his daughters. So let's look at this woeful sin. Someone read, um, get 2 Samuel, or you can read it from the screen. 11, 2, and then 26 and 27. Just go ahead and read. And it came to be at evening time that David rose up from his bed and walked about on the roof of the sovereign's house. And from the roof, he saw a woman bathing and the woman was very good to look at. And the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, and she lamented it for her husband. And when her mourning was over, David sent and brought her to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the deed that David had done was evil in the eyes of Yahweh. But the deed that David had done was evil evil in the eyes of Yahweh because David's sin went so far that it became a well orchestrated plan now I know that I've slept with this man's wife and now she's pregnant everybody's gonna know it's not Uriah's cause he been out fighting the war I'll be bring Uriah home and have him sleep with his wife. Then everybody will say, it's Uriah's. So when she pops up pregnant with a butt in the oven, everybody's like, oh, what a blessing. You and Uriah, it was such a wonderful bless. Deception. Deception to a low level. Yeah. I heard a pastor in Maryland who taught a, ministered a sermon, and I, that sermon sticks with me. And it was, make sure that you are not the object of a well-orchestrated plan. Where someone has devised a plan yes. against you. Yes. And here you are, just walking around. La -dee -do -dee -do. <laughs> Don't know that somebody's been checking you out for about three years. Wow. Don't know that they know you're going and you're coming. They know the people that come to your house. They know the. People are interesting, y'all, and we can be, if we are not in our place of safety in Yahweh, we can be brought into all kinds of 
horrible situations just because someone has deemed and focused it on you and it's a well-orchestrated plan. That's what happened to Uriah. Uriah was completely innocent. And this is why the word says, and Yahweh, it was evil in the eyes of Yahweh. It was evil in the eyes of Yahweh. So let's see. What happens after that? What's the result? Who gets to pay? for that. As Cain said, my, my payment is too much. It's too great. We have to be careful when we are committing a sin or we have a thought of sinning. Do you really know if you're going to be able to pay? Do you really know do you really know if you're going to be able to pay? We have to think about this, y'all. This is so serious. Someone go ahead and read 2 Samuel 2, what's on the, on the uh, 12, on the board. And Nathan went to his house, and Yahweh smote the child that Uriah's wife had born to David, and he was sick. And David sought Elohim for the child, and David fasted and went in and spent all night lying on the ground. And David saw that his servants were whispering, and David perceived that the child was dead. Then David said to his servants, Is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. And he said, While the child was alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, Who knows whether Yahweh shows favor unto me? and the child shall live. And David comforted Bathsheba his wife, and went into her and lay with her. So she bore a son, and he called his name Shalom, and Yahweh loved him. And Yahweh loved him. But look at all he had to go through. Where Yahweh smote the child with a disease, with an illness, and the child lay there sick, there is David. Now I'm sure if David knew that he was going to pay this price, yeah. that he may have thought twice. Yeah. 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 Whose wife is that? That's Uriah, your captain of your... Oh, okay. <laughs> Let me look somewhere else. Let me look somewhere else. But that's the thing. If we don't know... I, you know, you all, I often say that sowing seed is uh, like when you plant flowers and plants out in your, in your garden, in your house. Some are annuals, some are perennials. Yes. Annuals, they, they come back, they'll stay for that year, and they're not supposed to come back even though they're, they're telling me a little more something at my house, because I've got some annuals that are still coming back after four years. That's really interesting. But we do live on promised land court, so that might have something to do with it. I don't know. <laughs> but then you have perennials. Perennials, once it's a bulb, once you plant it in the ground, every single year that same time, it's going to come back. It's going to come in the spring. When, when Passover comes around, we start seeing the greenery coming up. And then all of a sudden, it's a beautiful plant or a beautiful flower. Now, how do you know that the sin that you have committed is an annual or is a perennial? Are you going to commit it and it's going to come up and bring a bring fruit and then Yahweh send it away? It go away? Or how do you know that you've planted it and now it's going to come up every every year? Over and over again. Over and over again. All you can do is do what David did. Throw yourself on the mercy of Yahweh's court. And ask for forgiveness. But what is the better thing to do? <laughs> Yahweh, Yeshua said it's better to obey than to give a sacrifice. Why does Yeshua say that? Because the only time you gave of a sacrifice like that was because you had sinned. So it's better to 
obey yes. than to give of sacrifice. And here we see David giving up sacrifice on his face before Father Yahweh, crying out to Father Yahweh, who knows if Father would give me favor and let the child live. But it was in Father Yahweh's hands. And Father Yahweh said, no, it's not going to. Because someone had to pay the price. Yes. And unfortunately, it was David and Bathsheba's first child, first son, that had to pay the price. Do you know if you're going to be able or willing to pay? Yes. So now, let's classify sin. Okay? Okay, would you say that this is sin? You can go ahead and answer. Okay, because what are they doing? Would you classify that as sin? Yes. Good. Okay, would you classify that as sin? Yeah, because he's doing what? He's pickpocketing. Yeah. Okay, would you classify this as sin? And that's literal and, um, yes, we have those backstabbers. Smile on your face. All the time they want to take your place. The backstabbers. You can't hardly walk for that knife sticking in your back. So all of these things we see classify as sin. We see the people worshiping and bowing down to the golden calf. Then we see the man pickpocketing, going into the man's pocket. This looks like a businessman who's standing there with his newspaper on his arm. He's probably going to work or going to a meeting or something. And here's this little rousing little creature right here who decides he's not going to work a job. I'm going to, this is my job, stealing from you. So some people believe that. That that's, that's, that's their job. Their job is going out stealing from you. So he's going stealing from the man. And then finally the last one where he is um, standing there, man just standing there minding his own business and somebody apparently does not like him. So now he has a knife to this man's back. So let's go on. Let's see. Let's go a little further here. Okay. Now when I show the pictures, we see the pictures, then we're going to decide, is this sin? Does the first one look like sin? No. No, because no, what's happening? <laughs> okay. Now, is the second one, does that look like sin? No. The lady's in the grocery store buying some groceries and stuff. Now, the third one, does that look like sin? Yeah. Okay, yeah, breaking in the house. Okay, let's see. Okay, someone read that first one. Can you read it? Wilma? Wilma. Wilma has been admiring her college roommate's ring ever oh. since she moved in. Oh. While her roommate slept, knowing that she was a heavy sleeper, Wilma took her ring, figuring she was entitled to some happiness too. Mm. Oh, why can't I have a nice, nice thing? Mm. Okay, let's read the next one. It's the Sabbath. Wendy had all week to shop, but she thought since it's shop low, and she was just sitting around after service, she thought it's okay to pick up a few items from the store. Wendy thought, it's okay. I'm not working on the, working, only be, what did you say? And he only he would be working my way anyway. Yeah, he would be working anyway. He would be working. Yeah, so I'm not making him work. He'd be working anyway. Okay, let's look at the next one. Someone go ahead and read that one. Wendell was out shoveling snow and realized after finishing that he locked himself out of his house. As he was trying to pry the window open, his hand slipped and broke the window pane. Wendell thought, dang, now I have to replace my <laughs> <laughs> uh, So, what does that tell us? What does that tell us? Sin does not always look or seem like sin. And vice 
versa. But we have to know whether it truly is sin. So let's go and let's see. What did Paul say? Well, Paul said. Someone read what Paul said. What then shall we say? Shall we continue in sin to let favor, grace increase? Let it not be. How, sh how shall we who died in sin still live in it? Still live in it. That's Romans 6, 1 and 2. How are those that we have received the gift of of Elohim, the gift of his Ruach HaKodesh, that is supposed to be permeating within our soul. Once we receive the spirit of Yahweh, we are supposed to receive it as a, as a renewing and a complete uh, uh, transformation. Of ourselves. We're not supposed to think the same. We're not supposed to do the same things. We're not supposed to even, even uh, uh, feel that things that are not right, they should be, a, they should feel not right to us. Even when we desire, our flesh desires to do it. But the spirit of Elohim within us is supposed to say, no, you have died to that. Yeah. We're not going to do that anymore, remember? Because we've died to that. How can you live still in darkness and in death when you have died to that? How can you? But there we go. We find ourselves in that position. Yep. And then we see Romans 6, 23. Someone go ahead and read Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death. Hallelujah. But the favorable gift of Elohim is everlasting life. Woo! In the sight of Yeshua, our master. Everlasting life. Everlasting. What we have got to do is get to a place. See, some, you know, things, change is uncomfortable. Change is uncomfortable for everyone. You know, and as I often say, you know, it doesn't matter if you are moving from a one-room shanty into a, a 32-room mansion. There's still change. You have to get used to, you're going to have to buy some furniture because a one-bedroom little house is not going to fill up a 32-bedroom mansion. So you're going to have to think about some color schemes, some things you might want to do. You have to think about getting your the, the movers or whoever over there. you got to take time to go out to places and look at furniture and decide on what, what you're going to do when you make that transition. It's still a transition, even though it's a good transition. Hallelujah. But it's a transition. So we have to realize that it's a transition and that it's okay to make that move into it. So when we come into the body of Messiah, we come out of the life and the walk of the world. And we come into the walk of the kingdom of Elohim. There is a transition that has to happen. Yahweh, I often say Yahweh didn't swoop the children of Israel up out of, you know, he didn't rapture them out of Egypt. But he walked them out one step at a time. And that's what we have to do. We have to be willing to walk out one step at a time. But we got to walk out. We got to be willing to leave. We got to be willing to transition into the life of Elohim that he calls for. And that life is life. Hallelujah. It's life. But we find ourselves sometimes in that valley of decision right here. Yes. Garrison being on this side, Ebal being on that side. Yes, yes, yes. And here we are in the valley 
of Shechem, the valley of decision. And we have to decide, are we Yahweh's? Are we not? Because there's only two kind of people in the world, y'all. Ain't no middle, little, no face, gray people with little gray hats on and hoods and walking around. I'm in the gray shaded area. No, there's a no. There's only his and not his. And if we choose to be his, then he, we have to walk like he called us to walk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what should we do now? Now you've got, we got a question. Okay, y'all. What should we do now? Do we continue in sin? No. no. Do we try to do better? If yes. it works, okay. If not, God knows our hearts. No. no. Do we study the Torah so we know what sin is and hold ourselves accountable? Yes. yes. Do we do all of the above? No. 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 Do we do none of the above? No. 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 Do we act like we know what the Torah says concerning <laughs> sin? And y'all will do the rest. No. no. Just, just grin and bear it. No. Let go. Let go. Yes. No. Well. Well. <laughs> okay, y'all got a clap. Very good. Good, good, good. Good job. All right. So, we do C. And then we, and we do <laughs> And it's not about ours. Yeah. So let's go a little, a little bit, a little bit deeper here, because we need to really be in a place where we understand the severity of sin yes. and the great, um, the the place where it can take us in a place of depravity. Okay, someone read Matthew five twenty seven and twenty eight. You heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone looking at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So it's about what's the, the thoughts. It even goes to the right. thoughts of what you're thinking of. It, it doesn't stop at people say, well, I just look. Just like this married woman said to me one time. I was just looking. You married. What are you looking at him like that for? Don't tell me because your heart is evil. Because if it wasn't, you wouldn't look at that other man like that. And you are already married. That's in your heart. So Yeshua said, hey, you've already committed it. If you've looked at it. And if you decide, because seed, you know what, seed, this is what seed does, y'all. It brings a harvest. Yes. Every time. That, that's the meaning of a seed. It brings a harvest. Seed wouldn't be seed if it didn't bring a harvest. So when we have thoughts, when we have actions, when we put words out there, all of these things are seed. They're going to bring a harvest. What should we think? Maybe on those things that are lovely, those things that are virtues, those things that are true. Sin separates us from Yahweh. Someone read Isaiah 59 and 2. But your crookedness, sins, have separated you from your Elohim. And your sins have hidden his face from you from hearing. From hearing. And people stand and say, I don't think he's hearing me. I don't know. God, I've been. You know what? For a person who is sinning, all Father Yahweh wants to hear from you is, I repent. Yes, he doesn't want to hear, give me a new job. I want that pair of shoes. Can I have, can I have a house over there? He don't want to hear none of that. He wants to hear, I repent. Hallelujah. And when we can repent, but see, first of all, what happens with us, 
is that people, you, when you repent, means that you have to admit that you did something That's wrong. Right. That's right. That's right. And people tend to not want to admit their guilt because I don't want to feel less than maybe someone else or feel like I'm those that suffer from delusions of grandeur that they have never sinned before. <laughs> that they are so good and so powerful that I can possibly, and I can definitely can't tell a congregation that I've sinned. Are you kidding me? Why should I ever have to do that? Because you sinned. <laughs> because you sinned. So now, let's look at another. What stops us from maybe reaching the place of death to our desires, wants, and needs? Come on, let's, let's just read these out. Yeah, a thirst for sin, a love for sin, people love to sin, you know, a need to be in control, not a real desire to change. Some people really don't want to change. They're doing their little thing, they ain't interested in you coming preaching to them, because they like, I'm fine with my little life, but you live Don't really believe. Some people don't really believe. They really do not believe that Yahweh exists. They really don't believe that. They believe that as I live and go through this life, that once I die, that's it. They really, some people really don't believe. And then don't see that there's a problem. Now that's a bad, that's a dangerous person. Because you first of all have to know and seek help. The only time you go and seek help is when you know there's a problem. But if you say there's no problem, then you're not going to seek help. Because I don't have a problem. Because I'm blessed and highly favored. I don't have a problem. A need to be to feel accepted. Yeah. That would stop me because I have a need, you know, because all my friends do this. So if I stop, they're going to start talking about, you know, oh, you think you better than us, and you think you all of this and all of that. Tell people, yeah, I am better than that. <laughs> so I mean, and if you are, if you don't want to be, I am better than that. I mean, what, what are you going to say? Be truthful about it. Right? Right. People desire to hear a uh, uh, misery loves company. Yeah. When people are miserable and they live a miserable life, they want you to look miserable and feel miserable too. Why do I need you around me, George, all smiling and happy and looking blessed, and I'm looking like I'm in living in degradation <laughs> because of the sin that I'm in? But then when I want to come to you, when I, when I say something to you and you want to give me the words of life, yes. Then I want to look at you like you crazy and say, you do you better than me. Really? Hallelujah. But that's where we go with some people. And the other one, you can't hardly see it. I should have put that in black. Not really understanding the consequences. Uh -oh. Now that is the most serious one. And that's where Cain was. Not really and King David, understanding the consequences. So let's find, ask ourselves, is it really worth the price? You know, I had a friend who always said this, and I said I had to put it in here. Sin will take you further than you want to go, make you stay longer, then you want to stay yes. true. and make you pay far more than you ever want to pay. That's yes. all right. That's the truth. That's, that's the real. Truth. That's real. And that's because you have annual, you have seed that is planted. Like I said, I put those little pansies out in that barrel one time four years ago. Every spring those pansies keep up. That's a that's an annual. That's not supposed to come back. But who said? Keep coming back. I want you to keep coming back. She loves 
the look of those pansies. And John, I don't want her to buy no more. You just keep coming back every year. So what if you commit a sin and Father Yahweh says, she need to deal with that for the next 10 years. Oh, That's right. What if he says that? But David said, who would know that maybe I would get favor from Yahweh and he would heal the child? Not really understanding the consequences. Someone read uh, Luke, those uh, chapters of Luke, Luke 14 and 18, and then it's 14, 16. Read first Luke 14, 16 through um, 27, and then do 28. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother mm. and wife mm. and children and brothers mm. and sisters mm. and his own life too, he is unable to be my taught one. Mm. And whoever does not bear his state and come after me is unable to be my taught one. Hallelujah. Unable mm. to be my taught one. Now go ahead and go to 18 at the top. Okay. 28. <laughs> For who of you wishing to build a, ta a tower mm -hmm. does not sit down first and count the cost? whether he has enough to complete it. Who desires, when you get ready to go into mm -hmm. purchasing something, and let's take the purchase of a home, and everybody who's purchased a home, you know all of the hoopla you have to go through, and contracts you have to sign, everything you have to do concerning the purchase of this home, um, in some cases, you have to purchase the land first, and then you have to purchase the building. If you're building the house, then there's a little different from when a person purchases a house that is already built and already on the land, and you're going to purchase the land and the house together. But then there are cases where people will purchase the land, and then they have to maybe move the, the uh, uh, have it cleared off and, and pay for that. And then they have to start before they can even uh, uh, start the building of the house. And they have to get the uh, water sewage run to the house and plumbing and go through all of the process of a, who desires to build a house and not first kind of a cost? You have to sit down and, and see, this is how people have to come to, to, to Yahweh. And this is what I told my mother and father. We do not, when I had a family member who said we made them come to the ministry, I said, that would not be us. I said, because this ministry, when you come to the walk of the Torah of Yahweh, that has to be a decision that you make. Can you understand the depth and the severity of this decision that you're making? We would never make anybody come here. Never. That would not be us. You have to have in your mind, this is my walk. It's going to completely change my life. Completely. Down to how my house is run. My shopping, the food that I eat. How I take my vacation days at work. This is a totally transforming transition. This is not a walk that you come into lightly. And so many run up in the door Y'all not gonna get, be able to get rid of me. I'm gonna be here, I'm gonna be hooked to go hit. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be when the door is open, I'm gonna be there. Every time I turn around, I'm gonna be there, I'm gonna run And they're not here today. Why? Because they didn't count up the cost. The cost was too great for them. And they couldn't pay it. So they didn't, they were not a wise servant and make it under, make themselves understand that this is what I'm desiring to do. Therefore, I have to count the cost. Am I willing to pay? 
am I willing to pay? Does anybody have any questions? Any statements? China and then uh, 